Hello everybody, my name is Lady Gear to you and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. In the previous video, uh, we collected the last of the blue choo-choos. So now that we have all the blue choo-choos and all the heart pieces and all the treasure charts, uh, we are now ready to finish this game. So in today's video, we'll be collecting the last of the Triforce shards. Kind of? We'll get more into that as we go on throughout this video. Uh, there are three more Triforce shards in the, um, that we need to collect, uh, um, but we're going to be getting two of them uh, uh, because the third one takes a while to collect, uh, so we'll be, saving, we'll be saving that for its own episode uh, next time on the Wind Waker, so that's going to be pretty fun and exciting and stuff. We're still not close enough for the tree over there. Let's try that again. Okay, you know what? I'm going to destroy this war super quick. Because on a failed recording, this stupid jerk not threw a cannon at my face when I already got to the top of the thing and I was on my way to uh, go inside the cave that we needed to go into. So, all warships should be destroyed. So, let's go go there. And, come on, tree. Come on, tree. Whee! All right. Um, so I go over here, uh, we, we've been, uh, here plenty of times before. We were even here in the last episode uh, to, dem to demonstrate that blue choo-choo. Um, but one thing that I'd like to talk about at the moment is something that I've been meaning to discuss for a little while. Okay, but well, first of all, something I have to explain right now is that, uh, this uh, Trevor Sword, um, this is basically like another battle gauntlet for fighting enemies. So it's not really going to be all that exciting because we've seen something like this plenty of times before. Although this is a different type, of, although this is a different type of, although there are going to be different types of enemies in this room. I don't know why I tried to go. Whoa, that was weird. Okay, I got distracted from looking at my gamepad to rearrange my items, so that was a little weird. Uh, these are different uh, enemies than what we've seen in the other rooms like this. So um, I'm having so much trouble aiming today. Okay, yeah. We've seen this stuff, that kind of things before, so what we're going to be doing instead is I'm going to be discussing something that I've been intending, that I've been meaning to talk about for a little while now, and that is unused islands. Um, stop attacking me! What is wrong with you? I'm the hero of this journey. I'm supposed to win. <laughs> Alright, so, as I've been trying to say, I'm going to be talking about unused islands because it's a topic I've been meaning to discuss for a really long time now, and... Uh, um, I ha and I had every intention to talk about it a couple videos back, and it kind of slipped in my mind because we we're going over other stuff. So I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, there, there in the game's coding, there is like a room labeled uh, Tinkle Island, um, and uh, it's just like a basic weird room. Um, well, basically and weird are opposites, so I don't know what I was trying to start there. Um, it was, a, it was a room that had like a color palette to, to resemble Tingle. Not, they're not really much is known about this. Some people want to say that this room was made for testing purposes and nothing else. Um, my personal favorite theory is uh, that this room was intended to be like an interior area for Tingle Island. Um, like maybe Tingle would have had a house on his island, but that got scrapped for some reason. So that's my personal favorite theory. Um, Another island that I'm really sad that didn't end up in the final game was uh, this one island that was supposed to resemble a Nintendo GameCube. Um, uh, this you can see concept art of this in Hyrule Historia. Um, it it was just like a regular island that resembles a GameCube. Not much is known about this, but what's really cool is that this idea didn't go totally to waste because in this game's uh, direct sequel, The Legend of Zelda: Phantom Hourglass. Uh, there is a DS island that resembles Nintendo DS. In fact, if you there's even something interesting that can happen uh, on that island. If you blow in the, mic the DS microphone in the same area where there would be a microphone on the DS island. So, that's a pretty fun little thing that can happen. I don't really know that much about Fire Mario Glass because I've only seen like five seconds of gameplay when I was, wa when I was over at a friend's house when I was in middle school. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... Another really cool island that didn't make the final cut was a uh, stovepipe island. It was supposed to be this um, volcano type of place that would have had a town at the base of it. Um, again, not really much is known about it other than the fact that it was called stovepipe island and that it had a town and that there was a volcano near it. Again, this one is also this island also appeared in Hyrule Historia. Um, 
By the way, if there's anything that, resum the, not, that reveals new details in the new Zelda book, um, Arts and Artifacts, I have no idea about it at the time of this video coming out because um, uh, that book is not released yet by the time this video is being recorded. Uh, if you want an indicator on when this video is being recorded, um, I believe it's the 11th of, Je of February when I'm recording this video. Uh, so, that's to give you an idea of when I'm recording this video. Because I just told you when I'm recording this video. Where is this? Where's Rob? Okay, he's over there. You're still not dead? Come on. Where? Is over here? Yep, there you are. Aha, you're defeated. Now we have to destroy the choo choos in cold blood. Um, but yeah, still Pump Island. This is. I have a. I have a theory about this one that kind of uh, relates to something else that I'll be talking about pretty soon. Um, and that's the fact that there were some unused dungeon. There were some dungeons uh, uh, that were scrapped from this game's development. One of my um, my personal the my personal theory for Stealth Pipe Island was that this island would have uh, been the location of one of those dungeons. Um, but maybe they found it a bit too redundant to have uh, two volcano themed dungeons because they already had Dragon Rest Island. Maybe this was even supposed to be like an early version of a Dragon Rest Cavern. Um, but then they, um, fit, but then they like they decided that they liked a Dragon Rest Cavern more than uh, Still Pipe Island. And the last uh, beta of room that I want to talk about right now is um, not necessarily something that was intended to be in the game in in the game, uh, but. Uh, before the, the Wind Waker was announced, there was uh, a GameCube tech demo of Link and Ganon fighting in a kind of realistic looking environment uh, with GameCube graphics and it was all super cool and pretty and stuff like that. This was never intended to be a full game. Um, Nintendo made that very clear over the years. Um, and then that, and then of course that, came, that became Twilight Princess, but... Um, that tech demo, the room that is located in there, is actually in the game's coding. I'm not sure if it's in the GameCube version, I'm not sure if it's in the Wii U version's coding, but it is in the coding for the GameCube version. So that is uh, something pretty interesting. Um, that's all I ever wanted to say about that. Would this guy please just do the thing? Why is everybody else doing the thing? I should not be allowed because it's 10 o'clock at night and I have neighbors. Ah, come on, come on. Alright, um... Now that we've talked about that, uh, the other thing I want to talk about uh, in this video is uh, the um, um, unused dungeons. The dungeons that went unused, Nintendo announced that the ideas for those dungeons ended up being used in future Zelda games, which is the reason why uh, they didn't include new dungeons in the remake. Um, I'm going to rant about that in a moment because I have a lot to say about that. Um, but basically, the uh, um, in the HD ver um what am I trying to say? Uh, basically, they uh, were Nintendo. My God, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, the Nintendo rested the game's development uh, so that it could be released uh, sooner rather than later, um, and uh, they didn't have enough time to properly implement the um, couple of, a couple of the dungeons they had planned for this game. Uh, so those dungeons ended up being scrapped. Um, um, it's been widely believed that the um, uh, Triforce, uh, tri that the Triforce head quest, uh, some of the Triforce shards uh, may have been located in these unused dungeons. Um, but because these dungeons went unused, and and Nintendo kind of put themselves on a uh, deadline to release this game, they made the Triforce side quest where um, they're spread across the Great Sea itself. And this does have some pretty cool cool ideas. Um, and it gives us a chance to have like something cool, like the ghost ship or something like that, which I personally would have liked if it, that was its own dungeon, but that wasn't exactly a dungeon. Um, that was kind of a repetition sentence, and I apologize for that. But this leads to something that I, won't need, that I really need to complain about with this game. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining too much, because I really do love this game. It's just that I have a problem with uh, how the ending of how the last part of this game is executed. Um, because, especially in the Wii U version, they had every opportunity to change this and they did it. Um, I would have really I would have really liked if they made like at least one new dungeon for the Wii U version and 
it didn't even have to be like a proper dungeon or anything like that. It could have been like something along the lines of the Color Dungeon in Link's Awakening, where you get like a new kind of award. The Color Dungeon was like a, was built completely from the ground up. They could have made something very simple that didn't really need a whole lot of effort to make, um, like the Color Dungeon or something like that. They didn't do any. They didn't make any new dungeons. Twilight Princess, on the other hand, has more. The original version has more dungeons than uh, most of the 3D Zelda games. And, the, and that remake is the one that gets the new dungeon. Not just that, it gets the core Cave of Ordeals. I do like the Cave of Ordeals. It is a cool idea. I, and I do like how, um, you, uh, how how far you can progress in that depends on how far you're into the game. That is a cool idea. What I don't like is the fact that it's pretty much a watered-down version of uh, something that's already in the game. You already have the... Wait, no. It's called the Cave of Shadows. The Cave of Ordeal... The... The cave, of, the cave of Shadows is a new dungeon. It's pretty much a watered-down version of the Cave of Ordeals, um, which is something that was already in the game. So, that is something that legitimately bothers me, that, uh, not, that, that the Twilight Princess remake was the one that gets a new dungeon, and that it's pretty much just a watered-down version of something that's already in that game. Now I don't, again, I don't mean to seem like I'm complaining, but this is just a rant that I wanted to go, that I wanted to talk about, uh, for a little, for a little while now. I do love Wind Waker, and I do love Twilight Princess. I like Wind Waker more than Twilight Princess, that's not something that I've been keeping secret or anything like that. Um, and I do like, and I do really love some of the things that the, that the Twilight Princess remake does, uh, but I'm not really happy that Twilight Princess was the one was the remake that got the new dungeon because Wind Waker was something that I think needed the new dungeon more than Twilight Princess. Not saying that I think the Wind Waker sword by any means. Uh, um, it's it's very much like how in Majora's Mask, um, uh, the game is a lot long. The game is like twice as long as um, um, it could. I'm trying to say. The game is like twice as long as it usually be, usually be if you go out of your way to complete side quests or anything like that. Like if they were just going for story, this let's play would have already been done. This let's play would probably would be about the same length as like Super Mario Galaxy 2 or something like that. Um, but um, with all the side quests and things like that, this game is like a lot longer than you'd initially think. But to, just by looking at how many dungeons are in this game. Alright, so now we have the final Triforce chart. Let's go up here and climb the ladder. This is going to be the last time we ever have to see Tangle. This is such a beautiful sight. We don't have to see this guy's stupid face anymore. Until we let's play another game that has him in it. I dread that day. Oh, Mr. Fairy, I've been longing to see you, sir. What should we play? What do you want to play? What? You're not here to play? Hmm? That fragrant musty scent, sir. You have found a chart? Splendid, splendid, so me, so me. Why, you can't read that chart in its current state. Impassable, sir. Would you like me to decipher it for you for 398 billion rubies? Tingo, tingo, kill a little Become readable! And we have the final chart deciphered. Hmm, Mr. Very, you must be very hard to find. You must try very hard to find treasure. When you select and open this chart on the map screen, the place where the treasures will sign forth. Now just go to that place and it will align your chart to help you find the treasure. This is probably nothing. This pro I don't want to talk to you again. You're stupid. There. <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to rant about Tingle. That's pretty much the theme of this video, where I'm, like, ranting about everything left and right. I don't mean to be so negative, people. Stop being mad at me. Okay. This Trevor's chart. Which island is that again? Um, I'm going to be back in a minute uh, once I go through my notes to figure out where this uh, Trevor's chart is. Alright, the final Traffer's chart, um, I find it funny that this was, that this is the final Traffer's chart that we got, but it's labeled Traffer's chart 1, 
Um, if I really put, if I really cared that much, I would have gotten these like in um, numerical order. But I didn't really particularly care that much um, to do that. But one thing, but now that we have the final Triforce chart, we can go over here. If we could go a little faster, that'd be nice. Come on, boat. Come on, boat. You can do this. It's your destiny to become the fastest boat in the world. There's a shiny column of light. Let's go collect it. This is the last column of light we'll ever see in this last play because we already have all the treasure charts. You get a Triforce, now you only need one more. Now where is that Triforce chart? Triforce chart, whatever. Well, we need to go back to where it all began. We need to go to Outside Island, and we'll be doing that in the next episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Until next time, it's geared to you. Oh yeah.